Hey everybody, welcome back to the O20 series. This is episode 16 where we cover Ethosuite. And this is something that really needs to be put out there. It's taken a while for us to put this out. I am approaching the subject, how do you get Ethosuite installed? More importantly, how do you make sure that your update from Ethos 1.4 point whatever goes correctly to Ethos 1.5 point whatever. So the way you do it is you type the word GitHub and Ethos, those two words, into any web browser. And the first thing that comes up is this thing that says GitHub Ethos Community. And you just click on here. And in the corner here, there's something about releases and you click on ethos the latest one this ha one happens to be 1.5.9 when you're watching this it'll be something much later and what this shows you is the latest update with all these different things there is i wanted to show you if it is here no it is not here Usually there's a simulator in here, and this is where people always ask me, where do you find the simulator app that we use for making videos? It's located in one of these releases. Usually the word simulator pops up here. Um, so what we can do is we simply press this little blue icon right here that says releases, and all of a sudden, we go to 1.58 you can look in here for assets you can scroll down in here and you can see that there's the simulator for the x10s express here's the simulator i use but let's go a little bit deeper what i'm looking for is this right here and this is the latest ethos suite so you want to scroll down from as you can see we started let me close all these assets down so it's a little bit easier to follow. They're showing Ethos Nightlies, and these are files that are not yet ready to be put on transmitters. They're testing them out, but you can look to see what's going on. Looks like we have some new features. There's going to be some improvements, and there's no assets to speak of. But as you scroll down, we can look to see that there's a whole bunch of updates as far as that's concerned, a bunch of assets. But the thing we're looking for is this Ethos Suite. And you click into that, and you see that we have Ethos Suite for Mac, the different Mac OSs. So I mean, the, essentially, it's this is the same thing, but one is a zip file and one is a DMG file. And when it comes to Ethosuite for Windows, it's an executable file. And I swore at one point we had Ethos Suite for Linux. I think that's coming out soon. Anyways, you download whichever one it is. And when you download it, it will save to your PC. And from there, we're going to move over to Ethosuite. So hang in there. Now that we have Ethos Suite installed on your computer, and yes, you did have to go in there and say things like, uh, I know this is not safe, but please install anyways. Now we should have this screen, and you should see that Ethos Suite is what we downloaded. This I showed you before, we're looking for 1.5.6. Now you're probably looking for a newer version of this since this video might be older by the time you watch it. But the idea is that you want to make sure that you have at least 1.5.4 for the version of Ethosuite on your PC before you try to update your transmitter. And what we're going to do is I'm going to put my transmitter into bootloader mode. I'm going to hold down the button right here and I'm going to quickly press that button right there. And when I do, it doesn't make any noise, but when I plug it in, you'll hear that it will recognize the USB. And 
right away you might get the screen and you think oh no this is not looking right this should be correct but it's not if you see these gray bars missing remote version all you have to do is go down to the RF module go back up and everything should be good now if you're not getting any of this and the chances are you your cable is wrong you want to make sure you have a USB-C data cable a lot of times with the cell phones you'll get a USB charging cable which is missing the data portion of it you might have to actually go to the store and buy one um, you can order it from Amazon they're not horribly expensive as you can see everything is up to date and including my module internal module if this one is wrong for any reason if this shows out of date all you do is click right here and you would update it there before I would do anything though what I would suggest is we're going to go into this thing called model manager and what happens is I have a bunch of models and I want to back it up so it will allow me to back up all these different aspects of the transmitter including the audio files system bitmaps user bitmaps scripts everything these are important things and then I could type remarks in here like what uh, the date and time is going to be recorded but you probably want to say like this is bef the update before ethos 1.5.x so that's what we're going to focus on right now is make the transition over from 1.4 point usually 1.7 or somewhere around there to ethos 1.5.x and people are scared because in the beginning the process was not as straightforward as it is now and what would happen is they would get the wrong bootloader on their system or they would not update the bootloader and the transmitter looked like it was bricked but the reality is that all it takes is a little bit of extra work but this became a much larger project for a lot of people now it's a lot more straightforward still I would say back up everything you go into ethos and just to prove my point I took a transmitter that I found in the warehouse it was two years old it had ethos 1.2 on it 1.2.1 I don't know what it was 1.2.7 it was really old and I did not do an interim update I went directly from that very old version of ethos much older than you have in your transmitter right now and I was able to get bring it right into ethos 1.5.x simply by first going in here updating this module you select it and you would say flash module and then after that I would go back to the manager and I would simply select this I would select the right outdated components and, and click this download button and the very first question that always comes up is would you like to update the bootloader please 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 say yes it is very important you say yes to that part and then it's going to do some work for probably a good 10 minutes it's there's a lot of updating that happens when you go from 1.4 to 1.5 but it will work and when you're done about the only thing that I've ever seen and this happens one out of 20 times is that sometimes you have to it will instruct you to unplug the transmitter turn the radio on and then plug it in once the radio is on and through all the warnings you would just plug it in and select ethos suite from the transmitter screen and then it will go through and finish doing the update for you if it stalls out you just start the update process once again but it works and you know I would say over the last um, two to three months I haven't had a single problem updating ethos 1.5 at all so I think we're past the, the danger zone when it comes to updating this so 
it will update everything and then the last question that pops up is something about if you want to delete your old audio file folders I have another video out explaining how to update your sound files because the folders change the were uh, so you have to move your sounds from the root directory to in our case it's the EN folder and US and then inside of the system menu in on the transmitter you have to go to general settings and select voice one to be from change it from default to en forward slash us if you're uh, from great britain you can choose gb and do the exact same thing except replace us with gb okay now i've discussed the backup of the models i discussed ethos when we talk about the model manager uh, actually we talked about all three of these the, the rf section the model manager so this is something hopefully you don't have to work with that's when you lose your bootloader and we have to work with you to get that back up and running um, the other things i would show you that are really interesting is the image manager this is something where you can list be you can bring images maybe from your cell phone of your planes and you just select what directory they're at and then it will You can open the file folder with file explorer as well and you have to specify an output path and what we'll do is i'll save the images on your computer and also onto your radio images and in this particular case since my transmitter is still hooked up it's recommending the correct size for the transmitter since this is an x20 it's going to say 800 by 480 pixels this is the right size for an x18 and this is the right size for an x14 audio manager is something where there's in the there's information that um, from mr d following with style where we talk about darren lines talks about bringing audio files in and there's a number of places where you can get pretty authentic sounding audio files where it's computer you, you type something in and you can specify what kind of voice it is it could be a male voice female voice it could be a british woman an older british woman or a younger british woman really interesting all the different sound files you can create and you all you do is you select this you specify what directory they're in and what this does is whatever the sound file you have it's the wrong format for the transmitter it's they're very specific about the bit wave bit length of what everything should be there's just an audio there's a lot of different little specifications but this will go through and it will translate everything for you and put it into the right format and then you would put it into an output directory and also to your radio audio files so that's exciting uh, the only other thing i would show you is the lua development tools this is where you would find your lua scripts you would find them there's documentation here and you open this up here to find the lua scripts themselves you can find them for things such as the multi-protocol module then the dfu flasher is something we're not going to work with hopefully ever we're pretty far beyond that now the repair tool is something this is the last resort so what i would say is make sure that you go back to the model manager and get back up your transmitter back up all your files especially the bottle files because when you get to the repair tool you might lose them what will happen is if you hit this restore factory settings it's going to ask you if you really want to do it and once you say yes it's going to delete the radio.bin file from 
your mass storage uh, drive and when it that happens you have to go in after it's done and you have to recalibrate your your sticks you have to recalibrate your sticks and switches and sliders i should say sticks and sliders all the analogs and then uh, you would also have to go in and recalibrate your gyro and the last I think that's pretty much it. You have to do those. You have to then you have to go in. You have to go into the general settings. I'm sorry. You have to go into system, then general settings, and reset up your transmitter. Everything is going to be like it's straight out of the factory. You have to do whatever updates you can inside of that file. Then next to it is the date and time. You update that as well, and you should be back up and running. It doesn't exactly wipe out everything off of your mass storage drive, but it does wipe out enough. And I'd only use that if you are to the point where you feel like you need to send the transmitter in because the errors are so profound. And with that, I think we've covered quite a bit. I hope you find this beneficial, and I do thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.